What's up everyone? Today we're going to look at prototyping a dynamic form in Figma using variables. As usual, there is a link to the Figma file we'll be using in the description so you can duplicate that and follow along. There's also a link to sign up to the Figma professional plan if you want to get started on that. Let's jump in. So in the file, you'll see the form that we're going to be creating. And our goal today is to create this form to be as dynamic as possible so the user can fill it out in whatever order they want to. You've got some pickers here for the date of birth and for the country of residence, and you've just got the normal kind of ios -y style table cells. Let's start with our first step, which is creating some variables. You have this table that shows you which variables we're going to be creating. So for each input, we're going to create a string variable that will control kind of what is shown in that input field. We're also going to be creating a Boolean variable that is going to flag whether that field has already been filled out. We also have this little tick next to United Kingdom um, to show whether that's been selected yet or not. And we also have the button on top here. We're going to make it a disabled color until the user has filled out all of the form. So with all of that listed here, let's start creating our first variable. In the design panel, I'm going to click on local variable and just create my first string variable. I'll call it first name and it needs to be empty so I can just delete the value from here. Now I have a few more empty ones so I can just duplicate this one. Right click, duplicate, last name, right click, duplicate, mobile. Now I need date of birth and country to say select on them because they open a selector. So string, DOB. Now let's start creating our Boolean variables. A Boolean is a true false kind of variable that can show us whether something has happened or not, or it can also be used to hide and show layers. So I'll click on create variable Boolean. Variables can't have the same name, even if they're different kinds of variables. So I need to give this one a different name. I'll just call it F name flag. Um, and then I'm just gonna duplicate this one multiple times to create the rest. The last variable I need to create is my color one. So create variable color, I'll call it next button and I'll just use 999999, which is kind of a grayish color to make it look disabled. Now let's move on to the next step, which is assigning these variables. I'll select my input text box over here. Then in the text section of my design panel, there is an apply variable button over here. I'll select it and just select the correct one. So first name. Now you can see that these are empty and these two say select. so are just kind of showing me what's going to be populated so it's going to basically disappear but that's fine last name i'm holding down command to have like a deep selection so i can select straight into that and don't have to like double click till i get there country and mobile and then for the next button i need to change its color to be the variable color so i'll click on it then in the fill section i'll click on the styles and just apply next button the last one is the tick. So again, holding down command, there's quite a lot of layers to dig through to get to this actual vector. And then to apply a Boolean variable, I need to right click the eye. This one's a bit hidden. So just right click on the eye and apply tick. It will disappear because it was set to false, which means that we're not gonna see the layer but we'll set it later in prototyping that it appears when we click on it. Next up is the fun bit, which is the prototyping. So to start off, we'll start with a boring prototype, which is just opening these pickers. So I'll click on my kind of row for date of birth. I'll go into prototype, so shift E, and then I'll drag a noodle over to pick a date. You can also do this from the prototype panel and add an interaction if you don't wanna use noodles. Then I'll set it, so on click, I'm opening an overlay. I'll make sure that it's at the bottom center. I have both of these ticked so you can close when you click outside and also add a background. Um, I do want, want it to be, yeah, let's put move in from the bottom. Lovely. Then do the same for country of residence. Drag one over here. Great, not navigate to, but open overlay. Once you've done it once, the kind of settings that you had should carry through to the next one, so it should be fine. Let's just check that both of these are working okay. I'll select my create account frame and shift and space to open my new prototyping preview mode. Click on date of birth, lovely. Click of country of residence, lovely. Wonderful. Now let's move on to set some variables using prototyping. 
So let me walk you through what we're gonna be doing first. We're going to set it so on every single one of these rows, when the user taps on it, it either fills in the name that we want automatically or it sends you to the picker and then when you click on the picker, it fills in one that we're going to choose. This form is not gonna be one where they can select whatever they want, but they are going to have a dynamic feeling because they can do it in whichever order that they choose to do it. So let's start by creating the prototypes on just the first kind of row and then we'll duplicate them to the rest. So I'll select my first name row because I want them to be able to click on the entire row and not just a specific part of it. Then shift E to go into prototyping and add an interaction. So I wanna say on click, firstly, I wanna set the input variable to something else, right? So it kind of fills in that space. So set variable, first name, and then what am I setting it to? So I'm gonna give them the first name. So when you're inputting some text, it has to be in quotation marks. So I'm gonna name her Hannah. So that's the first thing. When they tap on the input, it's going to populate that name. So it feels like they've done that. If you want to take this one step further, you can have it that when you click on this, the keyboard comes up and then when they click on the keyboard, it changes it to Hannah. You can also have it that you have a real dynamic keyboard. I have a short video explaining how to do that so they can input whatever name they want. But just bear in mind that can take up a lot of time and also it's not really necessary. Usually you can get away with this in a prototype. Now, after we've done that, we also need to flag that this variable has actually been set. So I'll click on plus, set variable, first name flag to true. Yeah, so we filled it and then we told it, it's already happened now. And this is really forward thinking. Remember our button over here, the next one that's disabled? We wanna set this up so once all of the form is filled, that changes color so the user can actually click on it and move on to the next bit. The way we're gonna do it is that any time the user taps on any of these rows to fill them out, there's also gonna be a conditional that checks whether this is the last one. So we're going to add a conditional. And this conditional is gonna check if all of the flags are true, that means this was the last one, we're done now, and the next button can change color. So we're gonna say if first name flag and last name flag and DUB flag and country flag and mobile flag equal to true. Yeah, so if all of the flags are true, then add an action, set variable color to, and then I'm just gonna choose like a blue color. So we're gonna copy this to all of them. So anytime the user fills in one of these rows, we're also gonna check, was this the last one? Are all of them filled now? If so, change the color and then we can move on. So I'm gonna close this. Then I wanna copy this interaction. So I'm going to click just left of the word, click over here and then copy command C. I'll select last name and mobile and paste first on those. Then I'll paste on the others, command V. Then I just need to tweak them a little bit. So over here, it's not first name that we're changing, it's last name and we're not changing it to Hannah. Let's change it to Smith. We're also not changing the first name flag, we're changing the last name flag. Great, all of this can stay the same. Same for mobile, we're not changing first name, we're changing mobile and we're changing it to, yeah, I don't know, made up a number. Um, and we're also changing the correct flag. Great, so those two are pretty straightforward. Now let's look at the pickers. So with the picker, it's gonna be a bit different. When they open the picker, now we want them to tap on the picker and it's just gonna select whichever date is kind of sh showing up there. So I'm going to click on my picker, then paste this interaction onto it. So firstly, let's change this. So we're not changing first name, we're changing date of birth and we're changing it to 20 July, 1993. And we're also setting the variable flag for date of birth, great. Now over here, I'm gonna paste it on this kind of picker. Let's change the variables. So set variable country to United Kingdom. And we're going to set the country flag to true. We also need to set another flag to true. If you remember, we had our little tick. So tick, 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 let's find it. Sometimes these kind of get away from you, so you have to actually search true. Great. I'll just bring this before the conditional 
And then with these two, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to actually bring them back, right? Because when you open it, you select something and they close. So we'll add an interaction after both of these pickers. So plus close overlay. Yeah, so it's gonna do all of that. Then it's just gonna close the overlay. Same for this one, plus close overlay. And that should be it. Let's have a look. I'm gonna click on create account, shift and space to open the prototype. Let's see. I click on first name, populates. Click on mobile, populates. Click on date of birth, comes down from the bottom. Click on this, boom. Country of residence, United Kingdom, boom. So you see it closed. If I click on it again, we'll open again. And now I can see that there's a tick there. Great. Last name, when we click on this, the next button should change color. Is it gonna work? Drum roll. Yay! 10 out of 10. Let me show you one more thing you can do. And obviously this is quite a short prototype. It's very small, it's a very small form, but I just wanna show you what the rules are and how you can set this up. And now you can go forth and make this as complex as you please. So one more thing is, let's say we wanna move on to the next screen, right? We wanna move on to a screen that says, well done. Yeah, so I'm just gonna drop in a frame over here, an iPhone 14 one, click on T, tap in and say, well done. Now we're going to use exactly the same conditional we used before, right? It needs to check if all of the flags are true, only then it can move on. So let's see that. If first name flag and last name flag and DOB flag and country flag and mobile flag equal to true, then you can navigate to iPhone 14, yeah? And make it fancy, let's push it, cool? Great, let's see this. So create account, shift and space. Can't click on this. I'm clicking, nothing's happening, yeah? Fill this, fill this, fill this, fill this, fill that. Boom, now I can move on. Yeah, so the possibilities are endless. I'm just showing you the tricks. Now you can do whatever you want with them and make really, really fancy prototypes. And that is it. Short video today to show you the amazing things that can be achieved using variables and prototyping. Again, these are only available in the professional plan and you can check that out in the link in my description. It just kind of shows you all the possibilities of what you can do with the professional plan. It's really, really worth it. I hope you've enjoyed. Leave a comment below. Let me know how you're getting on, what other videos you would like to see. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you at the next one.